Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. This quilt right here behind me, it has been quite a journey. This video is part three in a series called Buried Alive. You all might remember back in video number one where the audio absolutely stunk and I had to make a new one and put it back out. So now I have two videos out on YouTube that are the same thing, one with audio fixed and one with audio that's not so good. In the first video, I showed you how to make a scrappy crumb quilt using up all of your scraps that are buried in your sewing room. This quilt right here, it's in the Smithsonian as we speak, and it's called a crazy quilt. When I saw this quilt, I knew right away I had to make my own. In part two, you all came along with me and I showed you how I basted this quilt right here with simple pool noodles, saving our aching backs. Oh yes, and it works. There's one major tip that I don't tell you in this video, and you need to watch this one to find out what it is. Today's video is number three, and I'm gonna show you how I free motion quilted my entire quilt. And I'm gonna share with you the new binding technique that I learned this week that's really easy. Who knew? Today's video is jam packed. We have major quilting mistakes, major fixes, cameo appearances by extra special people in my life, and so much more. Before I get right to the tutorial, I want you to think through this entire video and tell me down in the comments your earliest childhood or adulthood sewing or quilting experience. You'll find out why I wanna know that after you watch today's video. You know what I'm gonna say enough talking already wait one more thing <laughs> this video was a ton of work to make do you know that you can show your appreciation for this video by not only hitting the like button but by also subscribing to this channel that's how youtube knows to send my video out farther and farther now we can say it enough talking already Let's get busy finishing up part three in the series of Buried Alive. I made a huge mistake with this quilt and I don't want you to make the same mistake that I did. 10 months ago, I spray basted this quilt in my video. I rolled it up on the pool noodle and I put it in my closet to figure it out another day. Well, that was a big mistake because what happens is when you do that, everything kind of crinkles up together and it has all these lines where it had just suctioned itself within the quilt sandwich. I had at first thought that I would separate the layers maybe, but I decided against that in the end and I just tried to press it all out to make it as flat as I possibly could because I was going to be doing a lot of free motion quilting on this quilt. So as you can see here, that's about as good as it's going to get. Lesson learned. This is a shot of the back coming up here. I wanted to show you what it looked like from the back with that first initial stitch line. I did serpentine lines throughout the entire crumb block area, framing in, making like a tic-tac-toe grid, as you can see here. This really helped attaching all the layers together because I knew I wasn't going to be really free motion quilting in the center of all the crumb blocks. The main free motion quilting was going to be all around the outer edges, framing everything in. And you can see there, after I did the serpentine lines, I did do one straight line boxing in all of those crumbs. Once everything was all tacked down, then it was time to tackle how I was going to do this free motion quilting on the outside of this quilt. I knew I wanted a nice frame around the entire crumb area. So I don't have regular free motion quilting rulers. So I just grabbed my two and a half inch ruler that I had and just used it as a guide. And I just boxed out that first 
area, making it two and a half inches all the way around. I used it as a guide only, but you could totally use your marking tools to make that line and just follow the line all the way around. With that first initial border, I took my pencil and just made a light line from the corner out to that two and a half inch border there. And that was just a guide to help me for the next step in free motion quilting. You can see here why that line is so important because I go from big ribbon candy to tiny ribbon candy and that just helps make everything nice and symmetrical. Here I'm just showing you how I went from the larger ribbon candy into the smaller ribbon candy into the corner. Now mind you, this is the first time that I've ever done ribbon candy. I honestly do more improv free motion quilting. I don't typically have a plan like I did for this quilt, so I still have a lot of learning yet to do, and so my work's not perfect, but whose is, right? I don't know. Probably Angela Walters. Hers is perfect because I watch her a lot, and she's got such great ideas and techniques, and she's got this free motion quilting down spot on, so if you get a chance, you really should watch some of her videos. More than anything, this quilt for me was a lot of practicing. I use techniques and different free motion quilting designs that I have never used before ever. So it was a lot of fun to just learn these techniques and just to actually do it. Here I'm just taking that ribbon candy and making it real small there in the corner and then I'm going to show you how I start it. So I start off real tiny and then I get larger as I go and then I just fill it in the rest of the way. I mean, it looks pretty good for a first time anyways. I don't know. The next step was to create yet another border area around those ribbon candies. So I decided I was going to do serpentine lines all the way around that outer edge of the ribbon candy, but I wasn't going to do one. I was going to do three. So I followed it all the way around three times with serpentine lines. I do speed up the video here just to get through it for you so you don't get too bored. But I was really taking my time with this. My fear was that because it was rolled up the way it was and it had so many creases in it, was that I was going to get a lot of tucks as I moved along while I was free motion quilting. So after the three serpentine lines that I initially did, I went around again and I made these sort of pods like. They almost were like in a leaf shape. After I created the pods, I then went around and just, as you can see, I just did kind of like a curved shape back and forth and back and forth within that leaf, which made it really easy to do. But it looked really cool and it filled it in really, really good. This is a good filler. After I had put all of the curved lines and all of those pod leaf things, I went around again with the serpentine line two more times. And this is what it ended up looking like. And so far, so good. I'm really enjoying the process of this and I'm really liking the way it's all turning out so far. Let's keep going. I wanted to make each of the corners on this quilt very special, so this is how I did that. I took my big ruler, my big square ruler, and I laid it down with one corner on the crumb area there that you see, and then the other corner out toward the corner of the quilt. And I put two lines on each side there so that it would kind of box in each corner. And so I did that on each of them so that way I knew not to quilt in that area right now anyways. For the next border area, I knew that I wanted to make it a little bit larger than the two and a half inches that I initially made around the crumb blocks. So I took out my nine and a half inch ruler and I lined it up along the crumb block area which gave me enough room toward the outside to make just a straight line all the way down because I was going to fill that with a bunch of swirls, which I knew how to do. <laughs> so those I've done a lot and so I, I wanted that to be a big filler in that area. So you can see here, I'm just making a lot of swirls just everywhere, big ones, small ones, medium, you name it, there were all types of size swirls in there. But that line that I made 
that I used my ruler as my guide, that helped me so that I did not go out of that area and it just gave me a nice guide to stay within. If you struggle with free motion quilting like I did, and still do even. I have a video on a great free motion quilting hack that I use to help me retain muscle memory on any quilt design that I want to make. Before I learned this hack, I used to make a lot of tiny quilt sandwiches and I used to practice a lot on them. But the thing is, I used to throw them away when I was done because I mean, what are you gonna do with them, right? I was so frustrated with the process of learning free motion quilting that's why I came up with this hack. The hack, it's a game changer, so you definitely need to check it out. Back to the swirls. <laughs> now, as you can see, as I'm making the swirls, I'm going one direction, and then I kind of go down my quilt a little bit, like right there, and make my swirl go in a different direction, because I didn't want them all, like, facing the same way. I like that diversity of one looking one way, one looking the other way, one pointing downward, one going upward. Well, you get it, right? <laughs> As I'm coming down at the end there of the one side, I'm taking note of that very light pencil mark that I made. Remember, we made a square around each of the corners, so I was mindful to stop right there. Once all the swirls were filled in all around, it was time to figure out the corner area. I decided that I wanted them in sections, so I just took my curved ruler and I ended up making five different sections that were sort of long going out toward the edge of the corner there. And I'm just marking it very lightly with my pencil. So I could make it somewhat even, I used the one end of the ruler right up on the corner of where my crumb blocks were. And that helped just to be a guide really. And then I took it to the sewing machine and on each of those lines, I made two lines of stitching. I wanted each of those sections to be very defined sections so they didn't run one into another so that it looked like it was a spray coming out of each of the corners. I don't know, in my head it sounded real good, but we'll see how it ends up. If you're not familiar with my channel, then you may not know that I had a special edition come into our family this past February. You may have guessed it. It's my new granddaughter, Josephine, and she's not so new anymore. She's getting really big, but I watch her during the week so her mom can go to work. So I need to balance between sewing and spending a lot of playtime with my new grandbaby. Here, I just wanted to show you the different sections with those double lines. It really makes a good definition. And oh yeah, she was in my sewing room for a good bit of this day. She just really wanted her Mimi. I don't know. <laughs> I loved every minute of it though. <laughs> it took a span of about three days to finish all of the free motion quilting on this quilt. So we'll see if Josephine comes back for another visit here before the end of this video. Keep your eye out. <laughs> On one of the sections of the quilt, I was trying to master pebbles. Pebbles have always been really hard for me to free motion quilt. So I knew I was going to incorporate them into this quilt somewhere. So I figure I did probably two sections on each of the corners in all pebbles. And it really did help to keep going over it and over it and over it again, just strengthening that muscle memory. And since I have not mastered making them all the same exact in diameter, I do big and I do small and then small and then a couple big. So I'm all over the map with that one. <laughs> I decided in this section to do a little bit of improv free motion quilting. And all that is is really just not having a plan and just going in and kind of just doodling on your quilt. I started this section with making a really big leaf shape and then I echoed inside instead of outside. So maybe that might help you with your echoing if you try doing in the inside after you make the outside. I don't know, it's kind of fun. So then I made a shoot coming out the side of that other leaf. And again, I made it bigger and then echoed on the inside. And you can see there, I filled in with just lines wherever there was any extra space. And then I came up and I did a really big swirl. 
and I wanted that to look like it was just shooting up out of those leaves I guess I'm not really an artist so to speak I don't draw or anything so I'm not sure when I'm doing this if it's going to turn out but I, I have an idea in my head so I just kind of went with it so I knew I wanted to come out and make another couple different swirls coming out of the side of it but going in the opposite direction I think it balanced out that big swirl in the end and then I just echoed some on the side there and then came around and then just did some fill-ins whenever I was in doubt on what to do next I usually did those little curvy fill-in lines and that seemed to really do the trick I decided to add some little scallops and echo them on top of this big swirl and I liked how it ended up looking and here's just a shot of that entire section after I was done with it. In another section, I decided to free motion quilt some different heart shapes. And I really like making hearts. They're really easy to make and it's just like a curved line and then down to a point and then back up around and you just echo a lot. And you can make them in all different directions like I did on the swirls. After I would make some of the heart shapes, if I made them big enough, I would always echo on the inside and then again on the outside. It just switched things up a little bit and made it a little bit more fun and interesting, for me anyways. And here's just a shot of those hearts after I was done. And here's some wishbones that I decided to incorporate into one of the sections. So as I was going here, you'll notice I kind of just stopped and I started making circles because I sort of messed up on the wishbone and I thought, oh, I don't wanna unpick that. So I just took it right into some pebbles. I want you to notice here that I changed my free motion quilting foot to the stationary quilting foot. I was trying out both of them, the one with the spring and the one without to see which one I liked better. And I liked the stationary one better. I'm really happy at the way things are turning out so far. But next I have to trim around the entire quilt and this is how I did it. I grabbed that big ruler again and that was how I squared things off and I cut that first. You see how I went off and veered off the sides there with my rotary cutter and that was very purpose driven because I wanted to make sure that that spot was right first and then I went around, did all the corners and then I trimmed up the sides of this quilt because I still had yet to do some quilting on that very edge. You see there next to the swirls, there's another whole band there that needs to be filled in. And I knew some of it was going to be cut off in this process and I wanted to make sure that the design that I ended up using didn't get cut off. I think we have a future quilter here. What do you all think about this? Little Josephine just loves the ruler and loves the sewing machine. Or do you think it's just Mimi? I think it might be just Mimi. I don't know. <laughs> After all of my corners are nice and square, I cut all of the side pieces. Once everything was cut all the way around, I knew exactly how much space I had to free motion quilt those side areas that didn't have anything on them and all I did here was just do some back and forth not hard lines they were curved on the top and bottom they were kind of like wishbones but I never crossed over and I left enough space on the very very edge so that the binding did not cover up the ends of this free motion quilting part for the binding on this quilt check out this beautiful fabric now i know it looks like crumb piecing it's like faux crumb piecing i picked it up from so yeah quilting it's so different and so perfect i decided i wanted to use it on this quilt for the binding for the binding i cut two and a quarter inch strips i believe i cut out eight at length of fabric for the binding now I'm not gonna go into much detail on how to make binding, but I will give you the highlights. I connect my pieces with right sides together, just the way you see me laying at the sewing machine there. I popped a pin in just to keep things nice and stable. And then I grab my little half inch ruler and I go from corner to corner on the opening sides, right in the crook of the corner, I guess. I don't know how else to say that. 
and then I just draw a line with my pencil. And this really helps keep things on track because you're going to sew straight down that line. And if you want even binding, you'll do the same too. Just make the line, it's no big deal. It doesn't take long to do it at all. And then you're gonna just sew right down that line and then you're going to end up with perfect binding. This next part I eyeballed, but you can totally use a ruler and a rotary cutter and cut a quarter inch away from that line that you just stitched. I finger pressed right at the sewing machine before I went and added the next strip. Finger pressing these ahead of time really does make things easier when we get to the pressing stage. This quilt ended up taking almost all of the eight strips that I cut for it. There was only just a small piece left over. I cannot get over how this faux crumb fabric really does resemble real crumb quilting. With this type of quilt, I just really didn't want to go with a solid or a stripe because I was going to have that big band of white all over it. So I really do think that this really helped complement it. So here at the pressing station, you see me, I'm pressing open all of the seams and then I'm folding it right in half evenly and giving everything a really good press. The plan is to keep the binding folded and attach it to the front of the quilt and then bring it around to the back, but sew it from the front, stitching in the ditch. In this video, I'm going to try a brand new binding technique that I've never tried before. And I watched it on Sew Very Easy and it looked easy, so I tried it. You're going to fold that first piece down and iron it just like you see mine folded there. Then you're going to fold it back down again and crease it again. And then you're going to open it back up after it's been pressed and you're going to cut at an angle that tip right there. It takes all the bulk out. And then you're going to fold it back into position like we just had it folded and you're going to repress it again. One of the tips she gave in her video was to be sure that you had it laying on the proper side of your quilt that you wanted to connect it on so that that open piece was away from being on the outside. I don't know, I hope that makes sense. Just position it the way I have it here and you'll be fine. When you take it to the sewing machine and sew this very first opening part, you're only want, going to want to sew an eighth of an inch. And then you're going to switch it right where I'm pointing at there and you're going to start sewing a quarter of an inch and then you're gonna connect it at a quarter of an inch all the way around the rest of the quilt. This might just be the best binding technique I've seen so far. The corners will treat just like any other binding tutorial. You will lift up and about a quarter before you get to the end, you will stop and leave your needle down and then pivot your entire quilt so that now you're facing the other way. Lift up that top binding like I am with that wooden tool, push it back, lay down the new binding and just continue sewing your quarter inch all the way down. Here's another corner right here. Again, stop about a quarter of an inch. I usually lift up just to make sure I have the right quarter of an inch there. Sometimes I've gone over and not enough. And you'll just do the same thing and follow along down the side. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, look at my baby. She is so cute. Oh my word. She is definitely one of the biggest blessings God has ever ever given me no doubt hands down <laughs> i guess you're never too young to start a quilting lesson right she jumped right in i was so proud of her and she just started playing with the binding and she wanted to watch mimi sew maybe i should just call this video josephine's first quilting tutorial i don't know what do you guys think down in the comments let me know I sure do hope that when Josephine gets older that she'll have great memories of being in my sewing room with me and just her and I hanging out. I think as time goes on and she gets older and she really gets involved, it's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. Back to the binding. Now when I reach the end, 
I didn't cut enough off there at the angle. So I'm showing you here the right amount that you need to cut off. So you need to find that opening that we made when we first folded over the binding and whatnot. You're going to go at an angle right where you see me cutting, right where that opening is. And then you're going to take that piece and tuck it right down in to that initial binding, the one where you sewed the eighth of an inch. And then you're just going to sew a quarter of an inch over top of all of that. This binding technique was easier than any other technique I think I've ever used. I took my quilt over to my big table and then flipped all of the binding up over to the back and then I put clips in them. We're going to sew it from the front by stitching in the ditch so we have to make sure that we catch that back fabric. Here I'm just showing you the corner. I just lifted it up and over and you can see I push one corner to one side and one to the other and then give it a clip. You kind of miter them together and they kind of just go in that way. I don't know. And then I clip it and then I take it over to the sewing machine you'll see here. Then we'll just stitch in the ditch all the way around paying special mind to the corners that we get everything just right. Now this ultimately happens every single time I sew binding on. I always miss some of the back binding and this quilt was no different I missed a couple spots and I had to go back and redo it and catch them back in the seam allowance but it happens what are you gonna do I tried to get really good lighting so you could see the whole quilt and the detail of it and I think I've achieved that let me know down in the comments though the journey on this one was really rewarding, and they're all a little different, these quilt journeys. In the end, I think it really did turn out well. I learned a ton along the way, and I hope you did too. In my videos, I try to get you to think outside the box. I always want to inspire you to go farther, go farther than you think that you can go. When you watch one of my videos and then you click away, my hope is that you have found just one tiny bit of value in something that you've heard or saw on one of my videos. Even if one of my videos makes you smile, I think I've totally achieved what I was going for. Either way, I know that you'll let me know down in the comments. <laughs> Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.